Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome, everyone is awake, I think. <laughs> welcome to the final presentations of the 24 Hours Education Hackathon. It was a little bit longer, around 30 hours, and uh, you did an impressive work. Uh, we start with the cases of Kennisnet. There were five teams competing to each other, with each other, and the two winners of these five teams are Learny McLearny, McLearnfee. Give him a warm applause. And it was team two, it was up from SVU. SVU. Yeah. I want to invite Learning Mac Learnfee to take over the stage. You have three minutes and two minutes for questions out of the audience. Learning Mac Learn face. Okay, how should I MacBook? Yeah. Or Ready, set, three minutes, good, yeah, here's you. All right, thank you guys for having us. Um, yeah, we're team Learning McLearn Face, and what we've actually created today is a personalized learning platform where students have the freedom to express their interests, and at the same time, teachers have a clear overview of what these students are doing. And we came to this idea basically because when talking to a few of teachers here, we found that there's a few clear problems. Students really want to explore their interests. They really want to do stuff that they're interested in, because it's also motivating, of course. And also, they want to achieve their learning goals, which, of course, they need to do to get to the next level. Teachers, on the other hand, want an overview of what their students are doing, and also want to make sure, of course, these students reach their learning goals. Um, so I'm going to show you our demo for the students. As you can see here, this is a student, and they have several courses. And these are all the courses that are given at school. And pretty much how we imagine it is every day they come to school and on their iPad they have this platform. And then they can press, for example, on math. And they will see all the different subjects within math. And they will choose one of these subjects. And within a subject they will choose an assignment. So let's say this. Then there's several levels. And each of these levels correlates to uh, a grade. So this is um, grade one and two in Dutch, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. And what we've really built into this platform is gamification in the sense that the kids will only unlock the third level if they've also, if they've gotten enough stars. Basically, they get stars when they achieve certain achievements, uh, for example, completing tasks. So a good example of this is, for example, you need to also do other subjects. If you're really interested in math, for example, you also have to do some English to get enough stars so that you can unlock the next level of math. Um, well, what we've also done is actually we've provided a dashboard for the teachers, and here are the designs for it. So what we wanted is very clearly that a teacher could see which students they have that are in their class, and also what these students are achieving. So here you would see exactly uh, how many stars they are getting in which subjects, so which subjects they're really interested in. Yeah, we just put 10 everywhere because it would be a bitch to do otherwise. But um, Pretty much, you can see what's going on with the students. And based on this, we can also give the teacher notifications. For example, Johnny might not be doing very well in English, so you could give the teacher a notification like, hey, you might need to help them out. Um, and of course, we want to provide as much information about the students as we can. 30 seconds left, great. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what we built. We built it open as, uh, as open as we can. We really want to integrate it with as much software that's already out there for learning material. We don't want to create the content ourselves. We just want to be the overview platform. And as, actually, we've also done some machine learning to make sure we get some good suggestions out there for the kids so they know what courses are interesting for them to do coming up. Thank you.
So are there any questions? We have two minutes for questions. Yeah, uh, you said that the levels are according to the grade, like uh, grade five and six. What if you have a student who excels at uh, some subjects, like he can already do grade six math while he's in grade four? can excel at what they're doing um, but we also want to make sure that they're not struggling in other subjects because you don't want a kid that's like in grade 8 maths but in grade 1 um, English so that's why we have the star system right you have to get an, a certain number of stars to be able to unlock that level so if you're really into math you know you'll be motivated to actually do the English classes okay. yeah who creates the courses Sorry? Who creates the, the content? Yeah, so we're working with other content uh, people. So there's like Mousework and a lot of stu uh, content creators already out there. And we really want to be the kind of platform that connects it all. And the teacher himself can choose which content he shows to the kids. And we hope that teachers also start making their own content. So we really have a huge database at some point of a lot of content. Uh, two questions. One, where's the fun if it's gamification? And two, if its students want to do learn things that have nothing to do with school but actually with with their lives can they go outside the programs of the official education very good questions um, gamification well gamification isn't all about just having fun it's also about motivating people to do certain things right you see it a lot uh, and in the end what we're trying to do is really motivate these kids to learn better and have fun while they're doing it um, uh, your other question was sorry again Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ge I guess it would be possible in the future. Obviously, we have an MVP for you right now. We want to get to the point where possibly, you know, you also have sports or whatever. Yeah, sure. Okay, that's it for the first pitch. Thank you. Give an applause. Uh, you can give it to the next one. Team two from Team of Tone, who is presenting. Yeah, you you can.
I did try. Not bad. Can I, can I do it with Hello? Eyes? No. Okay. Good luck. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. Go. Do you know? Did you know? Most of the teachers that are using personalized education have no insight anymore of the development of the teach uh, of the student. The problem is because there are a lot of applications. The problem is because there are a lot of applications inside the school and each application is speaking their own language. What we want to do to make it understandable for the teacher is to make one main language. We are combining all those languages or combining them, convert them to one main language so the teacher can understand it. I'm Tone from Ashview and I'm going to change the view on education. SU is very simple because it's one system, one language, and one type of a report. It's also preventing miscommunication and helping the student and teacher to get a quick insight on the student's progress so the teacher can act accordingly. Now I'm going to show you a quick demo of what we made in those 24 hours. Wait. Uh, yeah. So. Okay, wait, this is gonna work. No, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was the presentation, then it works. Close, ch yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, so finally. Here we have the login screen. If we log in, we get a quick insight of the progress, of the average progress of all the students. I'm Sam, I'm the teacher of group A1 uh, and A2. If I'm going to group one, I get a quick view of all the students with a quick status. For example, I click on my own, it's going really bad because I'm red. And I'm going to enter nothing. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay. so. If I'm going to choose a um, method here, I'm seeing um, uh, a graph of all the results uh, of the student the past month of past year. What well, it depends on what you choose. So, S view is going to change the view on education. When you take out a free choice of, out of education it turns into schooling. Thank you. So are there questions? No? No questions? Okay. Can the team of Avance from Hans Ome already get on stage to prepare the presentation so we can do the pre questions in the same time? Um. I hear a lot about uh, control of progress for the teachers, but how I, I would love to hear s how is this disrupting the system? Or where's the personal contact? If uh, I'm a teacher and I really know you in personal contact, then the whole uh, the progress result, if everything is online, it kind of kills for me the uh, educational feel. Um. Sorry, I um, yeah okay. Uh, the the, the um, our application is uh, converting all the uh, le uh, different uh, methods to one uh, to the to the one language we can understand, we can measure, so we can. Sorry, I <laughs> fuck. Uh, okay. Sorry, I maybe I'm coming. Yeah, my
Yeah. Sorry. Hi. Thank you for your presentation. I was just wondering, for teachers, how is this different or better than an Excel file that has all grades of the students? Uh, you, because of the applications that are, uh, the school is using, th those are all online applications. And for the teachers to get an insight of the, the, the uh, progress of the student, he has to go to all the applications. And we are going to combine all those applications, uh, to combine all the results, results in one, yeah, in one view. Yeah, does that answer your question? Someone with another question. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Tone. So uh, there were there were two teams working on advance. So both of the teams have a stage today, which is great. Emil, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Give it a go. Okay. I want you all to think about a time when you had a bad case of communicating with one of your teachers and how easily it actually could have been solved. You think it would have changed by now, right? I mean, we've come a long way since handwritten reports. Problem is, we haven't. This is my school's platform and it's still a big mess. And every day there are more and more easable, easy solvable communications we have created a platform that not only solves this miscommunication, but also prevents them from happening. Hi, my name is Emil Snellon from the Greek Squad, and I proudly present you UP. Now, UP brings the teachers and students together and has three core values. Simplicity, discovery, and synergy. I'm gonna walk you through every one of them. Synergy. It's the last one. <laughs> Simplicity stands for the design. As you can see, we use a very simple, easy to overlook design, so you can click very easily click through it without the feeling of getting a lot of sea of information in you. Now, discovery points out the way teachers and students communicate with each other. Discovery, no, you can discover how your, wor your students work how they are doing, and most importantly, if they are doing what you want them to do. This way, you can see, you can also see the results. Sorry, this click thing is not really working, right? Okay, this way you can also see the results of each individual, and you can see which one stands out. So, you can also tutor each student if, uh, individually according to their results. Now, at last, and definitely not least, Synergy. Making one plus one, three. We created something really special for group projects. An interactive, sorry. We created an interactive checklist. Students can check off their progress and teachers can then evaluate that part of the change project. If the students have done a good job, they'll get the second check mark. If it's not good enough, the teacher can fill in the box with feedback and then the groups will know what to improve. So the cycle continues until every part of the project is done thoroughly. By using this system correctly, the communication between students and teachers will improve enormously. So. Up is a simple yet elegant solution that lets you discover the synergy that teachers and students so desperately need. Welcome to the upside of education. Thank you. That was exactly three minutes. Great job. Are there any questions? Um, why do you think it is needed only to give feedback on assignments that are not done on a sufficient level yet, when you don't have the check mark. Oh, you will definitely also get feedback on projects that has the good points. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I, I understood that it wasn't possible to give feedback only when it's Oh yeah, you can, you can definitely give feedback, but it's most importantly to look at the feedback when you're doing something wrong. 
Uh, thanks. Um, you showed two screens, uh, one with a shitload of information and your better screen, yeah. but there was also yeah. a lot less information in there, so it was a bit unequal comparison. Uh, how would that same screen look if you have a lot of information in there? And do you already have screens of a prototype? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we actually already have uh, a working prototype. We, di we decided not to show every screen because we wanted to give the most important points. But yeah, uh, yeah we have a uh, very easily click through system. So the scene you saw, that's what how my school now has it. And what we created is with the up, you can easily click through multiple bars, but not it won't be as busy as uh, you uh, as a blackbird as you just saw. Okay, thanks. Other questions? None at all. Okay. Thank you, Emil. An applause for team up. Zijn jullie teamnamen? Teamnaam? Teamnaam? Ja. Yeah. Oké, okay, te team 2, which is Avanza Innovative Studio. Welcome. Good luck with your pitch. Thank you very much. Um, I'm from Avanza Innovative Studio and I'm here to pitch uh, the idea we had. Um, they never work. So for now, I'm just going to do it without a presentation. Um, modern education, you're sitting in a classroom, you're just getting all this information, and we, we don't think that's an effective way of, of teaching. Um, at Avance uh, Innovative Studio, um, we thought if we uh, create, a, create a place where students and uh, can can actually okay here we have the presentation great uh, so where students have a more active role and can tackle actually real world problems instead of getting all this theoretical information um, they can work together and uh, experiment with all these ideas in, in a safe environment so what we need from from for you right now is uh, we need to build a digital system uh, which can uh, give the teachers uh, a place to monitor the students so where they can, can get, see all the, the results they're getting and, and keep a tab on, on what they're doing. And for the students themselves to give uh, to, 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 uh, like a portfolio or a resume to um, place all their, all their projects they're working on, the ideas they have, and uh, that's, that's what we need to build. And the most important thing is that the two are connected really well, the two systems for the students and for the teachers, uh, but also uh, are able to work uh, separately um, so that if the student goes home or, or finishes school, he can still use the information he has stored on there. Um, from you guys, um, we need somebody who can help us with this or if you're interested in the pro uh, program itself uh, it's starting in September and please contact me or one of the uh, people from uh, Innovative Studio thank you very much for listening thank you are there any questions hi could um, the uh, could people outside of the school also look into the projects and basically the resume of the students so that employer employers could be better connected to students? Um, I don't think that's that's the case uh, in in the first place. Only if the students want that itself himself.
No other questions, so uh, thank you. Now we have the two winning teams from Case Presente. That's Blossom and it's Soul Space. Can Blossom start off with their team? Yep. Okay, Blossom, good luck. Is the, is the timer ready? Yep. Can we go? Yep. Nope. Have you ever wondered why you don't get taught how to do your taxes in school? Have you ever felt like your class was moving at a different pace than you? Have you ever felt frustrated with traditional education? I am here to bring you the solution. Hi, my name is Steven, and I'm here to tell you about Blossom. Ha, it's working, cool. Blossom is an online learning platform that is community-driven, feedback-driven, and lifelong. We are changing learning from the ground up by providing a platform where you can learn anything from history to chemistry, from the alphabet to quantum mechanics, but also important life skills such as making pasta. All of this in free, easy to digest, bite-sized modules intended for users of all ages and backgrounds a lifelong personalized learning platform. This is Blossom, this. It, in this tree, all modules are connected to one another with branches leading from simple concepts near the roots to more advanced topics near the leaves. Modules are also interconnected uh, and this shows how subjects relate to one another. Blossom is the framework that connects all educational content, created and added by all types of users. Even your 12-year-old nephew can educate us on the merits of having a hamster or on thermonuclear astrophysics. And Blossom is social too. In personal Blossom environments called saplings, you can create your own branches uh, with a specific purpose in mind. For instance, consider a hackathon sapling with modules for like programming, business, or power napping. And saplings can be as private or as public as you want them to be, so you can control who you share with. So, how is Blossom different? Blossom intends to make all educational content available for everyone, for free, regardless of the subject matter. So whether it's Arabic, physics, or, I don't know, cooking, Blossom has got you covered. We, at Blossom, are all involved with education in one way or another. We come from various backgrounds with various ideas and opinions on education, but we are all united to make education freely available to everyone. So, join us. Join us in making education freely available to everyone. Join us in enabling everyone to teach. Join us to make everyone in the world blossom. Thank you. Thank you, Blossom. Are there any questions? Where did you receive the inspiration from to make it uh, a blossom, uh, a tree? Games. Simple answer, games. So like you have games where you have a skill tree, for example, uh, I'm just going to pick a specific game, like Skyrim, there you play, uh, th that's like a medieval kind of game, and then you have a skill, like, I don't know, woodcutting. And then basically you start simple with something simple, but you, as you progress, you get through more advanced levels, and that's basically this. This is more or less a skill tree, but then for life. So it's a life tree. Can the next team already prepare the presentation? Are there any more questions? Um, where do you get the uh, content for the 
uh, the content is created first and foremost by users. So like I said, even your 12 year old nephew can create content. Similarly, teachers can create content. Teachers are users too. But for example, there are also already existing platforms like Duolingo for languages or like Codecademy for coding. And actually we want to work together with these types of platforms to provide content for our platform or sort of link to theirs. We want it all to be connected really. But initially, first and foremost, the users themselves. Uh, awesome stuff. Um, I was wondering, how do you place, who decides where the knowledge gets placed in your tree? So for example, if your nephew wants to do hamster physics or something, and does he get to choose where it goes in the tree or do you guys um, provide that? That is a very good question. So the, yeah, how, who or how is it decided where what goes in the tree? Well, for example, uh, we chose uh, ourselves a couple of basic things like mathematics. So let's take mathematics as an example. One of the first thing that one learns with mathematics is for example addition, subtraction, followed by multiplication and division. Fractions for example. So we're taking inspiration for example like primary schools to create a sort of order, a sort of structure. But yeah, as things get more complex, as you progress through a higher level of difficulty, this indeed becomes a challenge I would say. Um, and that is something that one needs to figure out as it is implemented as you go through that process, I'd say. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. So Soul Space is up. Thank you. Are you ready? Very much. Almost, almost. Can you warn us 30 seconds before the time is up? Yeah. All right, can everybody hear me? Yes, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, we were promised a revolution through massive open online courses, opening up education to the world. But recently, even the president of Stanford has admitted that the expectations about this were a bit overrated and should need to be adjusted. But still, the most popular course in Coursera is learning how to learn. Today, everybody, sing everybody in this planet wants to learn about something, either guitar or photography or coding but either you don't have enough time or you don't know anybody who can teach us or it's just too expensive, so we end up putting it off for later. For ages, we have thought of learners as the, of le learning as a transition from the student to the teacher, where the knowledge is always stored in the head of the teacher. Today, knowledge is free, and we should think about empowering learners instead of thinking of teachers and students. We have a solution for this, self-organized learning spaces. Physical soul spaces in the capitals of the world. And over the past 24 hours, we have built that platform. It's a place you go to as a member and can upload prototypes of courses for something you would like to learn. This inspiration, that book, this article, that online course. And you go put it online and look for a team to make it happen. Others can comment on your structure, they can improve it and join you to make it happen. Apart from members, there are residents who function and, as hosts and governors of the learning environment. They run the hub, they live there and they host games and challenges for the members. They award budgets and, ex and um, budgets for ex extraordinary behavior. Do you wanna show what we've built? I will show it. So this is the homepage, soulspace.net. Think of it as a think tank. Members, activists, practitioners can block here and co-create the shared foundations of Soul Spaces, a non-profit organization. This here is the first Soul Space in Vienna, where there is a platform with courses and projects people can upload and look at it. I'm gonna do this summer Harvard CS50 with a group of other people. Apart from that, there is also the members profile where you can see badges and gamification elements. And the unique thing about Soul Spaces is that you have the physical space where like-minded people create, share, and learn. But there is also a broader community that can connect with this and know what's going on in this learning environment and still benefit from what's happening in the Soul Spaces. We are setting up the first Soul Space right now in Vienna. It will function as a model with which the platform, together uh, with a financial sustainability model can be replicated to other world cities. Thank you very much. Are there questions? 
So are there any questions? Hi. I, I think you're tapping into a great market. Uh, MOOCs are still very popular, uh, but there's a need for offline, uh, I would say, learning still. And uh, I would suggest that you try and work together. There are big MOOC communities spread out over the world. Um, see if you can tap into that and bring part of it offline uh, and continue the learning so there will be a real blended mix of online studies through Stanford University. But if 100 students at Stanford live in Vienna, why not meet up and do offline learnings as well? Yes, it's also a great marketing channel. Thanks for that. Any other questions instead of great feedback? Okay, thank you, Soul Space. Thank you. So these were the six presentations. The judges, judges now have 10 minutes to decide which team of each case will be winning. And for that, they got great prizes. So in 10 minutes, Kenneth Nett will come on the stage, present the winner, and give you an award. After that, the advanced case will go on stage, Bart will go on stage, present the winner, and give the r prizes for them as well. And on the end, presenter ends, and then we do the closing word with a group photo. We got till seven o'clock exactly, so it will be a very short timing. So if we don't make it for the group picture, we're gon gonna move to the left, and we can group picture with all of you. Not only the participants, but all that are here. Please put the participants in front and the rest that is visiting us in the back to make the picture together. So what you see now is, uh, is a big, uh, big box you can win in. So now you see what the box is. Huh? <laughs> so everyone can win of each team. We have separate prizes. Last two editions we gave away two times 2,500 euros to further implement the solution. But in the first edition, the team fell apart. So we had to do something different to prevent that the team is not implementing and not using the money for a good reason. So that's why we got prizes and we hope you like them a lot. <laughs> So a question to you, who did like the Education Hackathon this day? <laughs> Raise your hands. <laughs> who likes to give already some feedback for us? More pizzas. They're left in the back. <laughs> Next edition, we'll take care of that, OK? <laughs> it was hard for us now with, uh, <laughs> with buying all the beers for everyone, because 
we had like a beer policy that we cannot drink any beers in the inside campus party. But next edition uh, will be outside campus party. You got one. Good. <laughs> Good. Anyone else that has some feedback? So everything was fantastic? The group formation at the starting point for where we wanted to start the workshop was doing was a bit hectic, I think. Do you have any advice for it? Yeah, we will do it with, uh, in private and not in public. I, don't, I, I have a lot of advice, but I can't. So I just got too, uh, too little sleep. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I also have one advice that you can, um, on forehand already, uh, okay, I'm going to do this in Dutch real quick. Uh, it's makkelijk is om in te schrijven dat je meteen op je case kan inschrijven, want voor ons was het ook een beetje onduidelijk waar we nou voor moeten kiezen. Als je een maximum aantal inschrijvingen hebt per case, dan denk ik dat je veel makkelijker en sneller aan de, kan, uh, aan de gang kan gaan. Thank you. If you get an assignment and you work in consultancy, the first thing you do is to challenge the assignment. But many, in many of the solutions, I don't hear much disruption or questioning the system as it is. So if there's an assignment from people, I would give the first workshop to all the students that start working on it, how to question the people who have the assignment to make what's the real question beneath it and uh, should we give the right answer, the best answer, or the answer that the world needs, or it has more fun? Good. <laughs> so I think the judges are almost ready. Are you ready, Ken, is that? So uh, thank you for uh, Rick, for bringing this case in. Um, thank you all uh, for being here. Uh, a special thanks for all the participants that worked on the hackathon case. It was a really good session. Um, and I would like to specify that every uh, result that we had in the case uh, actually contrib contributed to us uh, in learning about how to deal with this, uh, 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 this challenge. Uh, so special thanks to everyone. Uh, also, uh, Marcel who presented uh, on its own uh, uh, still his, his uh, disruptive ideas. So special thanks to you as well. Um, the winner for this case um, is going to be, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but learning with learning. <laughs> if you come, come here at stage. They are in uh, different colors. Okay. Thank you all. So the next case is Avance. Give him a big applause, Bart. Well, I want to thank everybody for participating in this hackathon. Uh, I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot too, especially to keep able to be thinking after two hours of sleep. So uh, it was nice. And next time outside campus party would be even better. Um, but um, we learned a lot, but the group that uh, enjoyed us the most is grouped uh, the up team. 
So it's your guys. So, congratulations. So the prizes actually are some 3D printers and what you have an extra is a printing uh, receipt for a company to do some metal printing when you want to make something that's real strong. You have some uh, receipt to get that done in another company for you. And these other printers you can take home and make your own stuff. Give him a big applause. Come on, louder. Grab a 3D printer, it's, it's yours. It's heavy, but it's good. We have to extra from the podium, so we have to extra from the podium. No, we have to go from the podium. Okay, and present the... Because I'm also a little bit part of Presente with the education hackathons, I arranged some extra prizes and they don't know yet. So uh, first of all, Philip, here's your word. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you very much. I am deeply impressed by the whole team here. At give really a big, big, big applause for the 24-hour hackathon. It was an amazing addition. <laughs> And I'm really excited what, what comes out of, out of that from Holland and, and what are the next steps. So, yo, uh, our idea or our uh, question or our challenge was to create a platform uh, where we all exchange what we are learning, where we all exchange what we're experiencing. And in these 24 hours, most impressed were actually the progress of the, of the people who really met each other. And it was really nice to see how we uh, how how the whole work came together, how the results came together, and how people met each other, and the results were really amazing from all the four teams that were participating. Uh, the jury was mostly impressed by Soul Space. And the price is announced before. You have the full ownership of the of the platform. If we build it together in, and, and how we build it together, this will really know up to us. <laughs> Wait a second, I got an extra prize for you guys. IBM Global Entrepreneurship Program offered you 120, 120K of credits on the platform to really come up with entrepreneurship program. You can spend this 120K credits. I will send it to you later. It's a huge prize they just gave us. So yeah, it's an extra, it's an extra program. But yeah, you win it already. Okay. I got one more surprise. <laughs> Use Clock couldn't be coming over here. And Use Clock is a startup that helps people to learn online faster than in a book. You can read faster online and learn skills faster than ever before. And they did a lot of neuro neuroscience, uh, neuroscientific um, research about it. They're offering every participant a free course of 500 euro to learn how to read hack yourself into a faster learner online. So use Clark, thanks, it's for all of you. I wanna thank you all for coming and I wanna make one big group photo on the side. Um, please help me with these 3D printers because we have to set them apart. The next presentation is about to come. We got a small present for the people that helped us make this possible and we will give it next to the stage. So thank you all the partners that were participating. We got a small bottle of wine and some stroke waffles, of course. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh,
Let's make a picture on the left side.